Okay, this one's been a bit of a long time coming, and the question is, which front-end system do I actually recommend? And this is one of those questions which I'm getting asked a lot, and it hasn't really stopped in the last couple of years. So what I'm going to do is go through why I think Retrobat is likely my favourite front-end as of 2025. Now, for those of you who's been following my channel for the last two and a half, three years, you'll know that I've uploaded a hell of a lot of tutorials ranging from retro arts to attract modes to techno parrot setups win ua you name it i've done it it was my mission at the time to pretty much construct guides for every emulator is worst front end out there but we're going to go back to the main question then so why is retrobat highly recommended in 2025 well very simple it's very easy to use and as time comes on we're getting more updates we're getting more support of emulators and everything else so so if you're actually new to Retrobat or front ends in general that is, then without a doubt use Retrobat because of its simplicity. Now I've done a range of guides in the past, I've done loads in fact for Retrobat. But if you're new to this channel as you're watching this video, let me show you how easy Retrobat is, just very roughly. And you'll see and you'll likely agree why I say this is the easiest and most recommended one to use. So on my desktop, I've got Retrobat and I've installed this. If I right click on it, open file location, it's this simple, it's just going into ROMs folder and then we've got lots of different systems. Now normally it's just a case of dragging and dropping your games into one of the folders. For example if you've got some Game Boy ROMs, drop them into the GB folder and then once we open up Retrobat, that's going to then display. Some systems in Retrobat are going to require BIOS, so we're talking Mega CD, Sega Saturn, PlayStation, and a few others. And again, most of the time, it's just an easy case. Just go into your BIOS folder and drag in and drop in. Okay, so let's open up Retrobat and show you how simple this is to use. And before anybody asks what theme I'm using just here, what I'm going to do is just press enter on my keyboard. And from here, if I go down to user interface settings, as we can see under theme set, this is actually CCAD book. And I get asked that a lot in my retro back guides. This is actually my favorite theme. And as we can see, I've got a couple of other themes just here, but this is generally the one that I use. So as we can see in retro back, I've got lots of different systems here. And generally, these are used for my YouTube videos. So I've got Amiga, I've got CD32, generally all of the systems that I love most. So let's take a look at the Commodore 64. So inside of my ROMs, folder in Retrobat, I dragged and dropped some games. We don't actually have any artwork and it looks fairly ugly and it really is as simple as just scraping your artwork. So from main menu, I'm going to go down to Scraper and what I needed to do initially was actually sign up with Screen Scraper and that's absolutely free. Under Systems Included, I can actually choose to scrape artwork. Now, if you're new to front-end emulation and you're thinking, what's scraping? Well, what this is doing is literally taking, downloading artwork and even preview videos from a particular database. In this case, it's Screen Scraper, which is absolutely free. So, if we go to Accounts, and as we can see just there, I've actually logged in using my free Screen Scraper account with my username and the password. So anyways, let's actually scrape the artwork for these games. So I'm gonna show you how easy this is. If I just go down to Systems Included, make sure Commodore 64 is selected so it knows what it's gonna be scraping. I'm gonna go down to Scrape now. And on the top right hand side, we can now see that it's scraping the games for my Commodore 64 setup here. Now, one thing which is really good about Retrobat is that it actually uses Retroarch in the background. Now, a lot of people was a little bit baffled with Retroarch, but if you're interested in learning about Retroarch, do check out my playlist. Anyways, it uses Retroarch to power all the games. So in a way, you can look at Retrobat like it's the flesh and Retroarch is the skeleton. But it's not only using Retrowatch, it's actually using standalone emulators. But the vast majority of systems in Retrobat is actually using Retrowatch. Okay, so scraping is finished and it's saying to us we need to update. So what we're going to do is just press enter, brings up main menu, and we need to restart Retrobat. So go to game settings, update game list, and yes. 
as you can see, I got some artwork for some of the games, but some doesn't have artwork. Now, generally, all the better well-known games are going to scrape artwork, but there's going to be particular games, which might be some homebrew games, or even names of games which aren't spelt correctly, and the database can't actually identify them. For example, the game just here, Beer Rescue, is a fairly new C64 homebrew release, so it's very unlikely that Screen Scraper database has actually got the artwork for this game. Okay, if we go back to the main menu, user interface settings. Now we know we're using CCAD book, but if you really want a real good arcade experience, we got AI hyped Sarah just here. If we come out, and there we go. So it's a very neon looking cyberpunk-esque type theme we've got just here. Now, if I go into my Thomas Wave set just here, I've got lots of Thomas Wave games, and of course, just like this theme, we can actually go inside and customize how this looks as well. So, if I open up the main menu, user interface settings, theme configuration, game list view style, which is already on automatic, we can actually put this down to something like Carousel. And if I come out, and here's my Thomas Wave within Retrobat. So, as we can see, this is a completely different layout. Now. Since I'm in a Thomas wave and I don't have any artwork, let's actually scrape some artwork for this. So again, scraper and systems included. Now as we can see just here, a Thomas wave is actually automatically ticked for me. So it's just a case of going to scrape now. Now, whilst this is scraping the artwork, what we're going to do is actually clean up how this Thomas wave system looks within Retrobat. So again, user interface settings theme configuration and game list view style this time i'm actually gonna go to detailed if i come out and there we go so it's now changed again and in a minute we're gonna get the complete artwork for these games as well as some preview videos but we can also do more customizations whilst we're waiting for this theme configuration we can go to color set and if i change this one to say orange and come out as we can see, we've now got orange theme rather than a pink purple theme. Now, within Retrobat, we can actually have music playing, but I've actually disabled this for the videos I do around Retrobat for this channel. If I go to sound settings and put front end music back on, if I come out, and what I'm actually going to do is turn this up. But I'm going to turn that off because I'm not sure, to be honest, if that's actually copywritten music. But that's how you do it. And you can actually own your own music into Retrobat. And I've actually covered that in the past. Now, as we can see, we got a Thomas Wave, which is scraping. So if we go back into a Thomas Wave. And as we can see, we now got some artwork and also some preview videos to go with these games. So it really is that simple. And this is why I highly recommend beginners in particular using Retrobat rather than something more complex like a Tract Mode or Retro FE. Although I have covered both of those, so if you truly want to customise a front end, then do check out those videos. Now, what I was showing you just a minute ago about Thomas Wave and how we can actually configure how this looks, well, we can actually do the same with the main Retrobat front end itself. If we go to main menu, user interface settings, and if I go under theme options, and I'm just going to go down a system view, let's put this to horizontal and come out. And there we go. So it's changed from the bottom to the middle. Of course, if you truly want the real customization experience, then maybe go for something like a Trats mode or even Hyperspin. Now, within Retrobat, we can also download things. Now, if we go to updates and downloads, if we go to themes, we can actually install themes. And if I go to installed just here, this is going to tell me what it is I've actually got installed. So right now I'm using the AI Hyped Sarah. I've also got CCAR Book as I opened up Retrobat. If we go to available, we got lots more just here. So these are all free to download and it's very simply a case of just going to themes and changing themes. And it does it automatically for you. Now if we go to the bezel project we can actually download bezels, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So what we're going to do right now is restart Retrobat, update game lists, as all my artwork for a Thomas Wave is just finished. And here we go. So here's my artwork for my games, and I've also got preview videos. Very simple. Okay, so let's actually take a look at opening up a Commodore 64 game. 
So it's a simple, it's just going into your directory, in this case Commodore 64, and from here I'm going to choose one of my games. So I'm going to use Pac-Land. Now if I hold on to my X button on my keyboard, and just remember you can use controllers, generally I use Xbox 360 controller. What I'm going to do is go to Advanced Game Options for this particular C64 game emulator now we're going to find that only libretro is usable within retrobat for c64 so what we're going to do is just leave this to auto if we open up the game and here we go so you're going to notice that we've got a crt look and a lot of people ask me on my videos how are you doing this well this is actually known as crt royal and we've actually got a bezel project commodore 64 surrounding it to make it look a little bit better than black bars on the side of the screen and just remember in retro arch if we press the space bar we can actually fast forward loading times Okay, so I'm not going to play the game, but I'm actually going to access RetroArch by pressing F1 and we can easily close out. If I go down to quit, and there we go. Now, I was talking earlier on about using emulators, standalone emulators within Retrobat, and this is something I've covered throughout the last couple of years. There's particular systems within Retrobat that cannot use Retroarch. So, say for example, PS3. Well, PlayStation 3 isn't supported by Retroarch as a record in this video, and I don't think that's going to get supported by Retroarch for a long time to come, to be fair. But if we wanted to use PlayStation 3, then we'd need to go to this Retrobat menu and actually download the RPCS3 emulator from here. And here's the RPCS3 emulator. And generally, it's just a case of installing these emulators. Now, you're gonna get exceptions such as Nintendo Switch emulators. You're not gonna be able to do this through Retrobat. You normally need to go to a separate website outside of Retrobat. And that's it then, and that's entirely why I recommend Retrobat, and especially for first-time users, the front-end systems. Around 15 years back, just since I was getting into emulation myself, the only things around at the time really was things like hyperspin, and that was highly complex stuff. Things have moved a hell of a lot, and the good thing about Retrobat is that you've got channels like mine who really invest a lot of time into Retrobat, in tutorials, that type of thing, and it's very easy to use. And I've created a whole community of Retrobat users over the last couple of years. So that is it. Retrobat is my highly recommended front end emulator of 2025, and it's even recently got a batch of of new updates for it so it's always supported and has done ever since I discovered it a few years back anyways check out my Retrobat playlists and comment in the comments section if you agree that Retrobat is by far the best you're going to get in the least complex anyways if you liked today's video hit notification subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content thanks for watching and until next time stay retro